Hi, my name is Corey, and I will be your Prep Scholar Math instructor today as we learn about a very important topic in algebra, the rules of exponents. For this lesson, we will first review what exponents are. Afterwards, we will discuss five important exponent rules we might find on test day. They are the negative exponent rule, the product rule of exponents, the quotient rule of exponents, the power rule of exponents, and the zero exponent rule. We'll also go over examples of when and how we can apply these rules to help us solve math problems. So let's get some experience using exponents. I'm sure we've all heard of exponents before, but what exactly are they? Terms with exponents in them are called exponential terms. They will have a base and an exponent associated with them. The exponential term here is read as two to the third power, or two raised to the power of three. Exponents are just a shorthand way of telling someone that we want to multiply the base by itself a certain number of times. The exponential term shown here tells us that we want to multiply the number two by itself three times, giving us two times two times two, which is equal to eight. We have two specific exponents that are used often enough such that we have special names reserved for them. If we see the exponent two, we call that squaring a number. Here, we read this as three squared. Another special exponent is the number three, which we call cubing a number. We can call this exponential term three cubed. Let's keep these facts about exponents in mind as we learn about how it will be tested on exponents. On test day, we can expect to be tested on five specific rules of exponents. So let's go over them now. The first rule of exponents is known as the negative exponent rule. As the name suggests, we can expect for the exponent to be negative. Here's an example of a base with a negative exponent. Here, this arrow points to the negative exponent. So what do negative exponents mean anyway? For example here, we can't multiply two by itself three, negative three times. That doesn't make any sense. Clearly, it would be nice if we could find a way to change negative exponents into positive exponents. That way, we'll be able to think about them more clearly. And thus was born the negative exponent rule. The ne negative exponent rule can be applied in one of two ways. First, we can use it to move numbers from the numerator to the denominator of a fraction. For example here, let's try to simplify two to the power of negative three. Applying the negative exponent rule, we can move the exponential term from the numerator to the denominator and change the exponent to positive. So here we see that two to the negative three has the same value as one eighth. We can also do the reverse using the negative exponent rule to move exponents from the denominator to the numerator. For example, let's simplify one divided by two to the power of negative three. Applying the negative exponent rule, we can move the exponential term from the denominator to the numerator and change the exponent to positive. So here we can see that one divided by two to the negative three has the same value as eight. This is a shorthand way to express the negative exponent rule in math terms. Basically, it just tells us to switch the exponential term from the numerator to the denominator, or vice versa, and we can make the exponent positive. The next rule of exponents is called the product rule of exponents. As the word product implies, it'll help us simplify exponential terms that are multiplied together. First, the product rule of exponents can only be used when multiplying exponential terms with the same base. For example, we can use the product rule of exponents to simplify two to the three multiplied by two to the five. Here, we would just add together the exponents to give us two to the eight. How about another example? Could we use the product rule of exponents here? The answer is no. 
the two exponential terms have different bases, so we can't just add together their exponents. Let's try another example. Could we use the product rule of exponents here? The answer is actually yes. With a clever math trick, we can rewrite this expression so that both exponential terms have a base of two. We know that four is the same as two squared, and eight is the same as two cubed. So we could rewrite both exponential terms with a base of two, and then add the exponents together to get two to the power of five. The next rule of exponents is called the quotient rule of exponents. As the word quotient implies, this rule will be used when we need to simplify exponential terms that are divided. Similar to the product rule of exponents, the quotient rule of exponents can only be used where we have a fraction that has exponential terms with the same base in the numerator and the denominator. Let's try an example. Here, we can use the quotient rule of exponents because the numerator and denominator both have a base of two. The quotient rule of exponents tells us that we can simplify fractions with exponential terms by subtracting the exponent on the bottom from the exponent on top. In this example, two to the seven divided by two to the four is equal to two to the seven minus four, or two to the three. Let's try another example. Can we use the quotient rule of exponents here? The answer is yes. Since eight is equal to two to the three, we can rewrite the denominator as two to the three. Then we can apply the quotient rule of exponents and just subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent, giving us two to the six. This is a shorthand way to express the quotient rule of exponents in math terms. As long as the exponential terms have the same base, we can subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. The next rule of exponents is called the power rule of exponents. It gives us a way to simplify exponents that are raised to other exponents. The power rule of exponents tells us that we can combine exponents raised to other exponents by multiplying the exponents together. Let's try an example. Here we have two to the three, the quantity raised to the power of five. We can apply the power rule of exponents here, multiplying the three and five exponents together to give us two to the 15. Let's try a harder looking example. We can apply the power rule of exponents here as well. We can distribute exponents on the outside of the parentheses to any terms inside the parentheses that are multiplied or divided. So we can distribute the five exponent to the numerator to get two to the 15, and we can distribute it to the denominator to get three to the 20. This is a shorthand way to express the power rule of exponents in math terms. We can simplify exponents raised to other exponents by just multiplying the exponents together. And we can distribute the exponent to any terms that are multiplied or divided inside parentheses. Finally, we have the zero exponent rule. It gives us a way to simplify exponents that are raised to the power zero. The zero exponent rule tells us that any number raised to the power zero is one. Let's try an example. So here, five to the zero is equal to one. Let's try another example. Here, x raised to the power of zero is also equal to one. Seems like a simple enough rule. However, there is one exception. Zero raised to the power of zero. Hmm. This is undefined. It doesn't have a value. Quite often, that's why many questions might tell us that a vari variable in problems with exponents can't be zero, to make sure that the question has a solution. This is a shorthand way to express the power rule of exponents in math terms. We can simplify exponents raised to other exponents by just multiplying the exponents together. 
And if we have zero as an exponent, then the value is one. Let's do a recap of our rules of exponents lesson. First, we learned that exponential terms have a base and an exponent, with the exponent written as a superscript. Next, we learn five rules of exponents. The first was the negative exponent rule. It tells us that we can change exponents from negative to positive if we move the exponential term from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa. The next rule was the product rule of exponents. It tells us that we can add together exponents of exponential terms that are multiplied together as long as they have the same base. The next rule was the quotient rule of exponents. It tells us that we can subtract exponents of exponential terms that are being divided as long as they have the same base. And the next rule was the power rule of exponents. Here this tells us that we can multiply exponents together. Finally, we had the zero exponent rule. It tells us that for any number other than a base of zero, a number raised to the exponent zero is equal to one. Feel free to review this lesson again anytime.